Reality hits like a truck and my eyes are met with that light. Fluorescent light and the sting of a pain through my body. I ache as if I fell down a flight of stairs twice. Missing my eyes adjust to the light and I realize that they are still dim. I hear the argument and the sending of something. I'm in the police station, near the interrogation room. Hmm. I hear yelling in the distance and I turn to see Vic sitting by me. Oh, you're awake. How are you feeling? Sore. My head is pounding and I feel like Frankenstein. What happened? Vic grins. Well, you're looking for the outsider. But that should not be your concern. It is too soon to say if they will find it. No, I mean me. Vic has the same grin. They squint my eyes in pain from the throbs of blood rushing in my brain. To put it bluntly, you were stabbed and your heart stopped. You were suffering from hypoxia. You may have had hallucinations or delusions, or your heart was not operating. You appear to be fine now. There are no external wounds that the weapon used against you wasn't truly physical in nature. I will count you as one of the lucky few. Your heart came back on its own. I couldn't decide where to cut you open first. I finally noticed that I'm laying on the cart, wearing nothing but a thin hospital blanket. There are sharp marks going down my chest. The only thing worse than being dead in the autopsy is being alive in the autopsy. I shiver as I see that grin turns a slight frown as he puts the scalpel away. My senses are coming back to me. How long was I out? Eight hours, give or take. Me want to get dressed. Vic points to the pile of neatly folded clothing. Never seen a shirt so sharply folded. Our admiration is for the simple thing. It is cut short as Vic leaves the room. I sit up on the car using my hands to support me. It feels as if every part of my being is still asleep, surging with pins and needles. Never had pins and needles be so painful. It hurts. It hurts so bad. I breathe deep, waiting for my body to wake up. The pain shoots through my spine and I inhale through clenched teeth. This is real. This pain and the dangers in this place are real. I was so foolish to think everything was going to be just fine. Then I thought this was some TV show, a dream, or some sort of grand hallucination. I sit in the quiet room with my pain, with the truth. There is no way home, and then I will die here if I just sit, waiting for something else to happen. The pain shoots through my body again, like lightning. This place is dangerous. This is not fun. This is not restarting my life or playing some sort of simulation. If I was attacked once, I need to be prepared for it to happen again. I clutch my fist to recall the house evasion. Distrust from the town. I think of home. The doors swing open and I'm startled as I sit on the cold car. I have to fight through the pain that hits my limbs, as if begging them to stop moving. An officer I think I've seen before walks in, his hand behind his back. I've definitely seen him before. Can I help you? No. He shows what he was hiding, a knife. Along through the edge shines at what little light there is. His arms reach back and he goes stab downward at me. I flinch, try to move, try to do anything, but I'm too slow to react. Oh my eyes slowly to see that I am unharmed. And it's as shocked as his monster. His arm struggling in mid swing. Held in place, fighting an outside force. His eyes feel with confusion. And then wild with pain as his forearm snaps. The crack echoes off the bare walls, and so does his scream. What in the world is all this? He wasn't talking to me. I see Vincent materialize from his invincibility. Um, he is holding the broken arm. Invisibility, yeah. Yes, me. The tall monster goes to swing at the cat. This uses that momentum to smash the knife-wielding creature's face into one of the wall mirrors, shattering both. I can hear more cracks and screams as the knife drops to the floor. I get up off the cart, my heart pounding. Vincent has this monster's neck up to a glass, peaceable, piece of glass still left in the frame. 
The struggle causes blood to spill down the reflective surface, spilling precious life onto the old carpet. I stand there, watching them struggle. What do I do? I mean... Tilt Vincent? I jump forward and push down on the long neck monster, shoving him into this, his doom. The grass cuts deep. The girl of blood bubbling from air as he keeps trying to inhale is haunting. There isn't much screaming as the glass snaps off in this thing's throat. We all stumble back onto the floor. Grab the knife, quick. I look around and find it close to me. I hold it up and Vincent snatches it away from my shaking hand. He lifts it up as he kneels over the bleeding monster. However, the strike never comes. I see the dying creature spasm and they exhale, all life leaving his body. Blood pools and he is absorbed into the fiber and second absorbent paper towel. I stick away from the moving tide of dark red. Vincent stands up, blood dripping from his hands, knees soaked. His face splattered like an abstract painting. He stares at the body, his eyes scanning the still monster for any remaining life. With a snarl, he kicks a dead sack and it barely moves. He turns to me. I'm naked and in shock, I think. After a moment of silence between the three of us, Vincent speaks. He's dead. You're just before the rest of the force comes running. I know how much you care for your modesty. With that, Vincent tosses me the knife and leaves the room. I sit in the corner, alone. Well, not alone, with the dead body of that monster. My body shakes and I grab my clothes. I try to put them on, my heart is racing too much. I put my shirt on backwards and fix it immediately. I fully clothed when the door busts open. It's gruff. It takes a moment to look around, staring at the fresh cords for longer than he should. The big boar approaches and squats down. But what happened here? Do what? I don't really know. It all happened so fast. It's technically not a lot, so. Well, it's not your night. It appears it was not Rothus either. Griff walks over and grabs onto Arathus' arm that drags him out of the room. Mega arm barely holds on with the tendons and sinew. Blood follows the body like a red carpet, which I walk to walk on. I exit the broken interrogation room, stepping on the blood and removing shoe cover stamps with each step. I step off the trail and leave behind my own red steps. I find Vincent leaning against the wall, speaking with a blonde haired horn. Demness, demoness. She turns to me with judgmental eyes. With a cold shoulder, she walks away and down the hall. Her heels clack on the tile floor. We did terribly in there. We need to be more aware. You, well, we just killed him. Yes. What is your point? Aren't we going to jail? We're librarians. We take a life. It is deemed necessary. No judge, no trial, no repercussions. If we deem a trial necessary, then we grant one. But the poor fool deserves one. That fool, Arathus, did not deserve one. We took his life. You made the choice. You're used to this, remember? You're a human. You kill for fun. Well, not necessarily. At least not me. Before I can say anything, Vincent starts walking away. He's wiping his hands on the wall, smearing streaks of red like he has done it many times before. Catch up with the wobbly legs and chained breaths. Vic appears around the corner, as he so often does, with a bucket and mop. He honestly cleans the bloody mess like it was the average chore. This is just a common occurrence. Clockwork, far from source. Well, of course. We exit out to the street and walk. So I guess uh, Arathus was the outsider? Vizzy puts his hands on, well, not on, but into his bloody pockets. I stumble. My muscles ache and burn from being dead and then started alive. Vincent starts to get away from me before he stops and turns. He rolls his eyes and puts his back against the wall. 
I finally catch up after I hustle. I'm exerting too much energy. I take a moment with a rest. I the corner my eye, I see a Batman. His eyes widen, staring at us as we walk. Ignore him. He's almost harmless. I turn my head and see our sanctuary library. With a flash of light, Llama comes up, rushing to us. His speed is unbelievable. Oh dear, oh my, what happened? Rallis attacked Charlie. Charlie killed Rallis. What are you doing out of the library? Get back to work. Come on now. Hit you two. I see Kit bounding down the street to us. Mr. Vincent. Mr. Charlie. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Mr. Charlie. Need back with Piggy? <laughs> Kid turns around to offer a back ride, seeing that I'm stumbling everywhere I go. Well, everywhere. I go to say yes, but Vincent interjects. No, that won't be necessary. He can walk on his own. Two near-death experiences can't stop him. Yes, Mr. Vincent. Both of them leave us, and I'm left wondering why I can't have a back ride after what just happened. I need to rest from all this, but I push myself forward and into the library. Went to the library and all eyes are on me. Some sniff the air, some turn their ears. Some enchant incantations or pray. What is going on? Vincent pushes me along, behind the counter and out of public eyes. Went his office and he turns the chair for me to sit. I put my body into the seat and with a thud. It feels so much better to be sitting. My body hurts and tenses up as I try to relax. Rebelling against all of my good intentions. He died. We killed him. I'm a killer. There was so much blood. I was attacked. Twice. Look up at Vincent and his face is longer. It's no longer sour. He lets go with a mean grin and slides down the wall. He curls up into a ball, his lips hanging down to a frown. His eyes just stare off into nothing. Moving his glasses up, he rubs the bridge of his nose with two fingers. I despair in the blood that is left over on his face. Moves the glasses back down. See the blood and snaps back. Those cat eyes meet mine as he stands himself back up. Ragged side, the bloody cat speaks. No rest yet. We have to make sure you're okay. Okay. I'm not okay. Physically. Not mentally. Now stand up. I do some order and stand up. I feel like an old man having to use my hands to push myself out of the chair. Back pains and bad joints. Good. I know your legs and arms work, but we need oxygen to all your muscles. So basic physical therapy will fix you. Now do some stretches. Vincent directs me on what to do. I bend my arms and my back and my legs. It all aches, but it appears to be helping. He sure does know a lot about my body. Alright, looks like you're not in bad shape after all. This will count myself lucky for once. I'm gonna need you to bring these books downstairs. Take your time, but put them away. I have more things for you to do. Before I can reject the order, the order, I don't know what I said first, because it picks up his stack of nanny books and places them in my arms. Do as I instructed. I have a few of the books Vincent scoffs at my insufficient strength. What does he expect? It's much harder than it looks. I'll just attack twice. Excuse me for needing a moment to breathe. I don't care about your complaining. You're just gonna have to suck it up and do it. My legs ache and burn with added weight. Put the books down on the desk. I can't. I said give me a moment. Tonight has. Before I'm getting the word in, Vincent grabs my neck. Walks forward and stands me into a wall. The pile of books stumble off the dust from the force. I feel his claws dig into my neck. My body fights out of instinct. My hands grab, but he is unmovable. I let the power I notice the pain. And the growl boys, Vincent talks at me, not to me. You don't think I know just how fragile and weak you are? Dumbass human. The ringing in my ear dissipate. <laughs> I could hear more clearly as my breath escapes me. I never thought you were some demigod to solve our problems. 
and now all these monsters who are after you are thinking the same thing. When they catch wind that you're just a brittle twig, they will come. They will take you and break you. You might have been lucky enough to survive another five minutes with this attitude if it weren't for you propagating your god like with those equally gullible and stupid masses. But not all of them are dumb. Do I have to remind you about Rathus? I just saw through the lies and look what he tried to do. Now, you will buck up, take these books, and walk away. Nothing happened tonight. Doesn't matter if you were attacked. Live for eight hours, attacked again, defeated your second assailant. This is a walk in the park for you. Get that in your head. Be the lie to live. Mr. So slowly moves back, and his eyes stare through me. Okay. Okay, Vincent. He lets go, and I feel gravity pull me to the floor. My legs wobble, buckle under me, and there I crouch, a coughing mess. Crazy. The angry cat stands, cold and firm, watching me struggle to get up. Before I can even get my full strength under me, I'm handed a book and then another. I just take it. Pathetic. I don't have time for your silly tantrums. Go. I want to turn around and hurt the cat. Use one of these books and bludgeon his skull in, but here I am walking towards the nosy library. Crazy. I answer and carry the book as I see monsters stare at me and look away as they try to talk to one another. These books are meant to go downstairs and head down into the dark. My cell phone is missing. I have no light. I still have a good idea of where I'm going. Walking through the rows upon rows of shelves, I find my destination. However, I need to make sure that I place them correctly. I should go back up and grab a flashlight. I think that I hear the cadence of booming footsteps. Loud thugs in the dark. Kit? No answer. The steps get louder. I ready a book as a weapon. I might get my wish to bundle someone over the head. What a novel after all. Steps around the corner and... Good evening. Back to work already. Vec? Yes. I must have put aside your device. Here. It is yours. <clears throat> I can barely see the demon in the dark, but I can see my cell phone being handed to me. I grab a hold of it, and that safety blanket like glowing drapes over me. Turning it on, I see full battery and use it to illuminate my surroundings. The light shines right into Dex's face. He doesn't quit. His eyes don't retract. It's more unsettling than it should be. Thank you. You're welcome. I will leave you to your work. He walks away and I can hear his light bust up get softer and softer. This isn't right at all. Is this my imagination going wild or is he playing with me? I would have guessed Larry since my imagination is no shape to be accurate. Focus on putting these books away, rather than my own thoughts. Physical therapy goes here. Veterinary health goes there. Emergency recitation? Directions? Nursing books? Medical journals? This last one is out of place. Demonic reparation? This book needs to go upstairs. Why are all these books on humans down here? What other books are down here? Should we take a look? I never really took a look at what exactly was down here. I scanned the categories. Religious texts, theoretical science, writings of tainted minds, humans, theories on the eternal, history of the black gate, catalogs of gates, and other important documents. I will have to go through these tomes in more details later. I head upstairs to put away the last book in my pile. It's easy to find the demography section and I put the book in this proper home. It just look it fits like the last puzzle piece. I make it to the front desk after putting the last book away. This it weighs me over. He doesn't even look at me. I can just assume these things. I approach him as it says in a flat effect. Charlie here will be able to answer your question. I have better things to do. Lucy gets up and walks away. I am put on the spot as a narrate. <clears throat> mm, rate redacted slams a fist on the table. You have to tell her to stop. Confidence? Tell who to stop what? 
upstairs neighbor is ruining my apartment. I keep using water and it's soaking through my ceiling. Oh. Uh, and that's unfortunate. I have to keep a bucket scattered around my home to catch the water droplets. We have to stop her from doing whatever it is she's doing. Logic. If it is your ceiling. It is her floor. It could collapse though. The whole floor is sagging. Well, get her here a second to figure out what it is she's doing. Finally, we don't need this document sign. We hand you a piece of paper, printed out on our directions for our library hearing to determine civil action. It's like a subpoena, but the name for the presiding librarian is left blank. Should I sign it? Okay. She was up after you tell her to. Glad I could help. Preacher walks away with his spring in his step. He comes to himself smug at what I just did. Who's gonna do something right for once? Hopefully that was the right thing. After that ordeal, someone else comes right up to me. It is a redacted. The description here. Oh. Okay, I got it. May I help you? Let's see why Vincent is so mean. No, but I'm here to help you. Couldn't find Vincent, so I'll just tell you. I heard that someone has those carrot cards. You know, the ones y'all been looking for? The entire cards? Yeah, yeah, that. I don't know his name, but we're on the street is that he has a metal arm. There can't be too many mocking with metal arms, you know? He's actually quite helpful. Make sure you tell Vincent about this and tell him it was me. Okay? Why are you telling us this? I don't want to be in the library's bad side, especially your bad side, and what happened tonight. Remember my name, face for later. If I can help again, I will do anything to get you on my side. I'm already on your side. I'm here to help. Good. Then that bully won't hurt me again. Who? Nothing, nothing. Make sure Vincent knows. They walk away and the library starts to close up. Monster shut out the door slowly and all my coworkers come together. The four of us make an impromptu circle. Vincent's all cleaned up, finally. At the end of the night, hopefully. Charlie won't be back. We'll be going back to that cabin, and we don't have any extra room suitable enough for him. Therefore, one of us is going to have to bunk up with this nuisance. I hate to ask this question, but who do you prefer? Not that you're playing favorites. Well, we'll save one more time. Return. Uh, if y'all want to do Long Run Kid, of course, you know, you can play this game for yourselves, but I'm going to do Vincent. I won't mind staying with you, Vincent. The aggregated side is pushed out of the orange cat. Great. I guess that's all things quick enough. Kit, Llama, good job tonight. Just want to see my heat or whatever every night, and I don't know, I don't know Long Run enough. Well, good enough, so, yeah. We'll figure out where we left off after we rest. Yes, Mr. Vincent. Oh my, good night. Yeah, I don't want to hear, oh my, oh lord, oh geez, every night. We all split up and head to our rooms. I just follow Vincent. We snake through his office and into his bedroom. Vincent takes off his shirt. It's very rough and the poofs up. That warning, he sinks down to his chair with all of his weight. Perfectly melt into it as his limbs rest along the arms and his legs splay apart. A long drawn out sigh is pushed out of the chest as the cat stares at the ceiling. I'm reluctant to move. Still staring at the ceiling, Vincent calmly talks. You can sit, relax for a bit. Dessert this time. I move over to the bed and sit. My body is still tense and I instructively. Whoa, I curl forward. I'm not about to. <laughs> yeah. I'm on the wrist. Height. At the time your excess energy, stress, anger, and rage comes forward. It's not going to be easy to relax. So I spot up and I can't help but ask. <clears throat> Here we go again. Why? Because I had to. Do you think I want to hurt you? Of course not, but everything is still painful. I feel betrayed and violated. 
I don't know what to think about this place. It really is as dangerous as I thought it was going to be. Reality is much worse than your imagination. That's what Suf taught me. Oh, Suf. You saved plenty of lives. Yours truly included. Was he more than just a mentor? No, just smart old fool. He told me I would never be able to save him. He said that I should use that energy to save another. He never said thank you for saving me. It wasn't you he meant. It was someone else. I hesitated. This expression turned sour. Never think you would know anything about hesitation. He turns and look at me, anger burning in his eyes. It's soft as he looks back up. It's not what I meant. I don't mean to be harsh. Well, I'm still thankful you were there. I'm not looking for gratitude. Then why did you save me? I don't know. This one looks away as he's sitting his trails off into a whisper. <coughs> Wait, why were you in the room with me? I never got to the cat system as if I accused him of a more heinous crime than murder. It's not like that, okay? I'll make sure you were okay. You should be thankful. Don't no question your good luck. I'm happy you were there. Very happy. I think that would have been the end of me. Sure as you left my spine. Why didn't I die from the previous attack? Why am I being attacked in the first place? Do they hate me this much? I don't think about it too much. You just get some rest. But I said you've earned it. I take off my shirt and it gets stuck as my arms are sore. I heard Vincent get up and help me pull it off. So useless. Trying to beat me up to the punch. I have to disagree with you on that assessment. He undoes my pants and tugs them off. And I sit in my underwear. Have you ever agreed with me on anything? I see a sincere grin spread across his face and the softest shuffle escaped his lips. Eh, I'll never soup that low. Are you smiling? Are you laughing? Shut up. Go to bed, you piece of trash. Dang. I pushed over so I'm lying down on the cat. Sit mattress. As he gets up and heads towards his office. He stops in the doorway as he turns the light off in the bedroom. Am I going to bed yet? After a night like this, I need to collect my thoughts. I'll be in bed shortly, Charlie. Sleep well for the both of us until I do. <coughs> okay, good night. I told her we under the blankets. I face the wall, my eyes close slowly, or close quickly. And I can barely keep my mind and body awake as sleep takes over. Alright. Well. That's nice six. A good time as any to um, stop for now. Now we'll go to the main menu. Okay, so that was Blackie, I believe, number six, I want to say. Um, of course, you know, if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, share, you know, everything that will be needed or included for this video, including developer stuff, uh, will be all in the description. So, yeah. Um, Hope y'all enjoyed the video and y'all have a wonderful day and I'll see y'all in the next one.